Good morning students. Today we are going to take up an entirely new topic and that is natural regions. Natural regions are those regions which are having a homogeneous climate, vegetation, rainfall, soil, wildlife and approximately it is found running across several countries. So today's topic for the day is equatorial regions, which is one of the most important natural regions of the world. So let us learn more about this particular natural region. Now, as far as location of the equatorial regions are concerned, as the name suggests, all these areas along the equa equator are having an equatorial type of climate. They extend to about 5 degree north of equator to about 10 degree south of equator. Now the equatorial regions are also known as the rainforests. The region extends roughly 10 degree north to 10 degree south on both sides of the equator. The region extends over large areas of Asia, Africa, South America, which are crossed by the equator. Now, in Asia, the equatorial regions are found in the southeastern part of Asia. They include Malaysia and Singapore. This southern part of Malaysia, the tip is of Singapore. Papua and New Guinea, Arian Jaya, Peninsula Thailand, and parts of Sri Lanka and adjoining India. So these areas in Asia have an equatorial type of climate. In Africa, the Zaire or the Congo Basin and the Guinea coast. Here we have the Guinea coast. These areas have an equatorial type of climate. In South America, the Amazon Basin, the coastal lowlands of North and Eastern Brazil, coastal Colombia and Ecuador enjoy an equatorial type of climate. Now, the climatic conditions of the equatorial regions are as follows. The sun is shining vertically in this part of the earth always. So, the mean annual temperature remains 27 degrees centigrade. The annual range of temperature is very small for about 3 degrees. This is because there is not much difference between the temperature of the hottest and the coldest months. The diurnal range of temperature is also very small, that is about 7 degrees centigrade. There is widespread cloudiness even during the night, which makes the nights pretty warm. There are two maxima and two minima of temperature related to the apparent migration of the sun. There is very little variation in the length of day and night, 
so seasonal variation is also very less. Now the equatorial regions are known for their very high rainfall. It is characterized by very heavy rainfall throughout the year accompanied by thunder and lightning. It is also known as the four o'clock rain. It is well distributed and it varies between 150 to 350 centimeters. It's a whopping amount. The rainfall is a convectional type of rainfall. So here we can see how very heavy rainfall occurs every day without fail with thunder and lightning. Several seasons in quick succession can be seen in a single day. Mornings are bright and sunny, just like spring. Soon it begins to warm up and it becomes intolerably hot, which adds to the discomfort with a very high humidity. Nights, however, are fairly cool. High humidity makes the night very sultry. Sultry means very hot and humid. However, the coastal areas experiences a refreshing breeze due to the nearness to the sea. Now, as far as the vegetation is concerned, the world's densest vegetation cover is found round the globe along the equator and commonly they are known as the selvas in the Amazon basin. Selvas means jungle, forest. This is the region of bright sunshine, high temperature, high humidity and very high precipitation. The equatorial areas have got lush green dense and luxuriant vegetation. The equatorial regions are known as the lungs of the world due to the vast extensive forest belt covering nearly 7 million square kilometers is very very important to the environment as the trees purify the air by absorbing a large amount of carbon dioxide and exhale huge amount of oxygen. So the dense forests are often called as the lungs of the earth or the lungs of the world. So here we can see how the equatorial forests are acting just like the lungs of the earth inhaling huge amount of carbon dioxide and exhaling huge amount of oxygen. So they are basically sinking carbon dioxide and giving out large quantities of oxygen. As far as the characteristics of the trees of the equatorial regions are concerned, they are broad-leaved, evergreen, with no particular season for shedding of leaves. The trees grow very tall as if they are competing each other for sunshine. The trees grow very, very tall and they form a huge canopy. Canopy means just like an umbrella. And that restricts the sunlight from reaching the ground. So there is very little undergrowth near the ground. Lack of sunlight makes the forest very dark and damp. The trees are having buttressed roots. You can see over here, not only the trees are very huge, they are also the base is also very very huge with buttressed roots which means that the trees are very firmly placed on the ground so that they do not topple due to excessive rainfall. The leaves of the trees are broad leaved and they also have a drip tip so that water does not remain on the leaves. They all slide down through these 
drip tip that is the tip which helps them to slide down. Now there are three layers of canopy. The emergent or the top layer is about at a height of about 50 meters. The second layer of canopy is at a height of 30 meters and the third layer is at 20 meters. So there are layers of canopies. Lastly, there is the layer of shrub bushes which do not depend on direct sunlight. These are the several important and different variety of trees which are found in the equatorial regions. The mahogany, the ebony, the rosewood, the green heart. The green heart tree looks exactly like a heart. Here you can see how it is shaped like a heart and therefore the name greenhouse, the green heart. Sincornas, rubber, all these trees are the prominent or the most important trees which are found in the equatorial region. As far as human adaptation and response is concerned, most parts of the equatorial regions are inhabited by tribal people such as pygmy, especially in the Congo Basin. Elsewhere, in the Amazon, there are several different tribes which are found in the Amazon Basin. Over there, the forests are so dark and so thick that there is almost no contact with the outside world of the people who are living very deep inside the forest. Due to very hot and oppressive climate, the regions are very sparsely populated. However, some parts like Java, Singapore, parts of Indonesia and Malaysia are highly developed. Rubber plantation in Malaysia and subsistence agriculture is carried out in the South Asian countries under the equatorial regions. So if we compare the Amazon, the Congo with that of the Asian equatorial regions, we find great differences where the Congo and the Amazon are very large, thick forest. This is not exactly so as with that of the Asian equatorial regions because the equatorial regions in, the, in Southeast Asia are scattered in the form of islands. So no part is very far away from the sea. Therefore, the climate over here is also slightly different than that of the Amazon and the Congo Basin, which are very far away. Some areas are very, very far away from the seas. So today we have learned in detail about the equatorial regions. I hope you have enjoyed. So that is what we have enough time for today. I am signing off for now. Thank you.